Now if you're making your own nose, I'm going to show you how to do that. Just take the same colored yarn as the main color and double it up on your tapestry needle. So just double up the yarn. Then you're going to come up from the wrong side and mine is in line with the bottom of the safety doll eye. So you just line that up and then come through with your yarn. Make sure you leave some yarn on the back for tying a knot. Then go over three stitches and back in. So you just make sure that it's centered between the eyes. And then go back in and then tie a knot on the other side. Then you're going to want to make several, go through it several times. Make sure you don't tuck, you get mixed up with your um, side panel. I left a loop to finish the side panel. Make sure that you don't get it tangled with that. Then you just take and go through again. And you want to just build up the nose, a little button nose. So there's two. I'm going to go a third time. And so far it's looking good, so even three would be good, but I'm going to go four times. Then when you're happy with your nose, you can go ahead. I might go another one. So I went about five times. Then you can take and tie a knot on the wrong side and then trim your loose yarn ends. So I'm going to trim the loose yarn ends. And now you have a cute little button nose. The other thing that I did with the tie is you notice that on one side where I tied the knot I have the two loose yarn end strands. I'm going to create that on the other side too just so that they they look symmetrical. You can always trim them after you're finished tying a knot. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot on this side so it looks the same. And then I'm going to trim it to the same length or similar length. And that way the tie looks the same on both sides. So now you should have both feet and both arms. And we're going to sew the arms and the feet onto the doll. We'll sew the arms on first. So go ahead and take your craft stuffing and stuff both arms full of craft stuffing. For mine, I wasn't able to get a lot of stuffing into the actual hand, but that's okay. You don't need to have stuffing in the hand. Just make sure that you have plenty of stuffing in the arm and don't overstuff it to where you can see the craft stuffing through the crochet gaps which mine doesn't have as you can see. Now the first thing you want to do is get your tapestry needle onto the long end that you left for sewing and just kind of fold the two pieces together and just take and sew the edges together. Now when you're sewing the arm in place you want to sew along the back seam and also I'm about one to third round down from the neck and also the thumb needs to be up facing up and then you just sew in and out to the body right along the back edge only the other thing is that I'm in line with the ear as a landmark so it's midline with the ear and the body and then you repeat the same process for the other arm. The thumb needs to be up, remember. And this is what my arms look like when I'm finished. Two thumbs up. Go ahead and stuff the feet with craft stuffing. And then you're going to sew the edges together just like you did for the arms. Now you're ready to sew the legs on. And you want to make sure that the legs are facing, the shoes are facing forward. So they should be facing forward. And 
You can use the landmark on the bottom of the body. So here's the bottom magic circle of the body. And I've lined up the legs so that one is on either side of the magic circle and also in line with the magic circle. And then you just sew right along the edge for both legs. And then the legs fold forward and backward. So now you can set your doll aside while we make the hat and the outfit. We're going to start with the hat. So for the hat, you're going to start with your main color. And mine is pretty in pink. And we're going to start with the magic circle. So you're going to drape the yarn across your four fingers. Use your thumb to stabilize. Wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. And then hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your crochet hook. Go under those two loops around the middle fingers. Bring up a loop. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to place six single crochet into the magic circle. So there's one, two, there's four, five, and six. Then with your forefinger and thumb, you're going to hold the base of the six single crochet. You have two loops on the opposite side. Go ahead and pull on one. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one, but this one's closing. Then take that loose yarn in and pull on that. Then turn your work so that you're working in rounds. And now we're going to make two single crochet into every stitch around until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round. So two single crochet into every stitch. Go ahead, finish making two single crochet in every stitch until you have a total of 12 stitches in the round, and then come back. Now at this point, if you need to close the center of the magic circle, just turn it over and pull on that loose yarn end on the back, and that will close up the magic circle. Now we're going to make increase rounds, which means we're going to continue to increase the number of stitches in the round, so you're going to need a yarn marker. I'm going to go ahead and get one of my scraps of yarn for as a yarn marker. And for those of you that know how to make the increase rounds, we're going to be going in chronological order for all the way up to one single crochet into nine stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So take your yarn marker, place it right where you left off, and for the first increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into one stitch, and then two single crochet into the second stitch. And then you're going to repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. One single crochet into the first stitch, two single crochet into the next stitch. And go ahead and repeat that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker and then come back. Then just take your yarn marker, move it up, place it right where you left off, and for the next increase round, you're going to make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch. So I'm not going to be giving you the stitch count until I finish. If you want to keep track of your stitch counts for each round, all you have to do is add six to your previous stitch count. So now for this increased round, just make one single crochet into two stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should have 24 stitches in the round. I'm just giving you the stitch count to make sure that you are doing it correctly. And so if you want the next stitch count, all you have to do is add six to the 24, and then that gives you the stitch count for the round. So now the next increase round is one single crochet into three stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around back to the yarn marker. So now you should know what you're doing. You, you're going to move the increase, I mean, move the yarn marker up to where you left off. And you can see that we're going in order. The first one was one and two, next one was two and two, then three and two, and now you're at one single crochet into four stitches, and then two single crochet into the next stitch, repeating that pattern all the way around. So go ahead, finish completing all of the increase rounds. You know the next one will be one and five, and then two, then six, seven, eight, all the way up to one single crochet into nine stitches and then two single crochet into the next stitch and then come back.
So now you should have 66 total stitches in the round and I'm just going to give you the measurement. Each of these boxes is an inch on my background here and so it's about one, two, three, four, five inches in diameter. Then you're just going to move your yarn marker up to where you left off and you're going to make one single crochet in every stitch around for seven rounds. So seven rounds of only one single crochet in every stitch. So you're no longer increasing your stitch count. You're maintaining your stitch count of 66. So when you get to your yarn marker, just leave it in place and keep making one single crochet in every stitch until you finish seven rounds and then come back. Now, after you finish the seven rounds of one single crochet in every stitch around, go ahead and make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. So you just go right into the next stitch over, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Make sure you get through the full stitch. Then you're going to go ahead and chain three. One, two, three. And then you're going to make, you can go ahead and remove the yarn marker. Then you're going to make two double crochet into the next two stitches. So just yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over and go through two two loops remaining, yarn over and go through two to complete a double crochet. You make one more double crochet in the same stitch, so yarn over, go into the same stitch, bring up a loop, and make your double crochet. And then you need two double crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to make one double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to repeat this pattern, one double crochet, and then two double crochet into the next two stitches. There's one with two, and then I'm going to make two in the next stitch. And you just keep repeating this pattern all the way around. So then in the next stitch, you're going to have only one double crochet. and then two double crochet in the next two stitches. So go ahead and finish repeating this pattern all the way around and then come back. So then after you get reach the beginning stitch you're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. And now you're only going to make one double crochet into every stitch around. So make one double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch around for only one round. So one round of one double crochet in every stitch. So now once you reach the beginning you're going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. And now we're going to change colors. So now you're going to bring in your alternate blue colored yarn and then bring up a loop. Then lay your work down and tie a knot with your previous colored yarn. And then you can cut the previous color. Then we're going to make, we're going to bury the loose yarn ends as we crochet. So just lay the loose yarn ends across the work just like this. And first to start, you're going to make a chain of two. One, two. That's going to count as your first half double crochet for the round. Then we're going to make one half double crochet into the next stitch and one half double crochet into every stitch around. So to make a half double crochet, you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, go behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a half double crochet. And then you're going to make one half double crochet in every stitch around. And 
just going to show you a few more. So one half double crochet in every stitch around. And then come back. Then when you reach your first chain two that you made, make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain two. Just yarn over and then pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now you can take and bury your loose yarn end. So take your tapestry needle, put it onto the loose yarn end and then just weave it through the wrong side of your work. I like to go back across too, make sure it's nice and buried. And then you don't have to worry about burying the loose yarn in that's on the center of the hat where the magic circle is because that's going to be tucked in and sewn. We're going to sew the hat in place on the doll. But before you sew the hat in place, you may want to add a rose, so the rose is optional. I have a separate video tutorial for the rose. So the rose that I made for the hat is optional. I have a separate video tutorial for this quick and easy rose that you can make this. And then instead of a pearl in the center, I put a button. And this is just a unicorn button. I love how it turned out. So now we're going to sew the hat in place. So you want to make sure that the hair is positioned the way you want it before sewing the hat down. If you liked the yarn that I used for the rose, and again the rose is optional, there's a separate video tutorial for the rose. I used I Love This Yarn Metallic, and the color is, let's see if I can find the, oh, Blush Sparkle. It's just a medium four style yarn. Before you sew the hat in place, you're going to want to put craft stuffing into the inside or the wrong side of the hat. And then you're just going to place the hat onto the head. Make sure that you have the front facing front and the back where I usually put in the back the um, where we joined. That goes towards the back. Make sure that the hat is centered on the head. And then you're going to sew with your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn at the base of the ruffle. So you want the ruffle to be able to move up and down. So right at the base, right before the dome of the hat is where you're going to sew all around the head. Make sure that the hat stays centered. Now the first round of sewing is just to center the head and make sure that the hat stays. And then you're just probably going to make more than one round as you sew the hat to the head. Here's how the back looks. So it's on top of the hair and again on the front. So after you finish sewing the hat in place, you're ready to make the shirt. So to make this shirt, get whatever color that you want for your shirt. I'm using my light blue colored yarn. And you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Take your crochet hook. I'm using my 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Go right through the loop. Hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then we're going to make a chain. So I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial, but you're going to make a chain of 64. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one chain, two, three, four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 64, and then come back. So now you should have your starting chain of 64, and mine measures 13 inches, in case you're using a different style of yarn. Then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook, so you count back one, two, three, four, and then make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. Then you're going to make one double crochet into every stitch back across, so you yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and finish a double crochet. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across. And when you finish this first row, you should have a total stitch count of 62. So I'll make one more with you. 
yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the remaining two to complete a double crochet. So go ahead, finish making one double crochet in every stitch back across, and then come back. So now you should have reached the end and you should have a total of 62 double crochet stitches across. Now go ahead and get your stitch marker and you're going to place it, count back 30 stitches from where you just finished and then place a stitch marker into that stitch. Now you're just going to turn your work and you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. So you yarn over, go into the next stitch bring up a loop and make a double crochet and then you're just going to make one double crochet into every stitch until you get to your stitch marker so one double crochet in each stitch until you get to the stitch right before this, the stitch marker and leave the stitch right before the stitch marker empty so you just make one double crochet in every stitch until you reach that first stitch marker or that only stitch marker and leave that one stitch before the stitch marker unworked and then come back so now you should have a total of 27 stitches and I have the stitch right before the stitch marker you're going to make a slip stitch into that stitch so just go right into the stitch yarn over and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you're just going to turn your work and then make a double crochet into the next stitch and then one double crochet into every stitch back across. And when you finish this row you should have only 26 stitches. So make sure that you count and stop after you reach 26 stitches. So now I've reached the end and I have 26 total stitches after finishing that row. Then you're just going to turn your work again, make a double crochet into the next stitch, and you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch across until you have a total of 23 stitches. So you should only have 23 stitches after finishing this row. So now this is how your work should look and you should have 23 total stitches in that row after finishing that row and here's your stitch marker still there. So you can see how it's kind of slanting forward this way and then slanting on the end as well. Then just turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then you're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to single crochet into the next stitch. and then single crochet into the next stitch and then repeat. So you're going to chain four then you're going to single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet into the next stitch. So go ahead finish repeating this pattern of chain four and then single crochet into two stitches and repeat that all the way across and then come back. So this is how my work looks so far. I have these nice chain four loops and then I finish, I have two remaining stitches on the end and I did my last single crochet and chain four. Then I'm going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then slip stitch into the next stitch then you can finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. 
So this is the first collar that we finished. Now we're going to make the other collar on the opposite side. So you want the collars on the same side. So don't put one collar over here and then make another collar, collar on the bottom. So you want the collar to be on the same side. So we're going to work on the opposite side now. So you're going to join into that top stitch on the end. And we're going to make this portion over here. So you're going to join your blue colored yarn on the opposite side and then tie a knot. Then you're going to chain three Then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch. Go behind your loose yarn end to bury it. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch until you have a total of 30 double crochet. So this is my third. Counting the first chain three as a double crochet. So I have three. And you're going to keep making double crochets in every stitch until you have a total of 30 and then come back. So now I finished the first row and I have a stitch count of 30. Then you can take and turn your work and then make a double crochet into the next stitch. and one double crochet in every stitch back across until you have a stitch count of 27. So that was my third. Double crochet in the next for my fourth. And then you're going to keep making one double crochet in every stitch across until you have a stitch count of 27. Then when you reach the end, you're going to go ahead and turn your work and then you're going to double crochet into the next stitch you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across so for mine I stopped on 25 stitches then just turn your work and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and then chain four one two, three, four, and then single crochet into the next two stitches, just like we did on the opposite side. So chain four, and then single crochet in the next two stitches, and repeat that all the way across, just like we did for the opposite side collar. And then the same thing on this end, when you're finished with your last one, you can make a slip stitch in the last stitch on the end and then go ahead and finish off. Just bring enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then we finished both of the collars for the top part. So now we're going to work on the rest of the shirt and you can see how you have a little U-shape here in the center of the shirt. You can go ahead and remove your stitch marker. So now we want to place the stitch markers for the armholes and where we can see the front panel and then here's one side for the back panel and one side for the back panel. So you're going to count from the end. So starting from this end just count over 14 double crochets. Put the stitch marker in the 14th stitch. Count over to 24 and place your second stitch marker. Then count to 39 and place your stitch marker and then 49 and th that's your last stitch marker. After you place your stitch markers turn your work so that the collar is facing you and you have the right side of the work facing up. Then take your crochet hook go into the stitch with the stitch marker and just to the right. So here you don't want to the far stitch marker for the back panel we're going to make the center front panel. So you're going to go into the stitch marker 
first stitch marker to the right for the front panel and then bring up a loop with your crochet hook make sure you leave enough for burying into your work loose yarn end chain one and then tie a knot and then you're going to make a chain three one two three then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch go behind your loose yarn end and you're going to make one double crochet in each of the next total of 16 stitches for the front panel so you count the first chain three and this is the second and third stitch fourth so go ahead finish making one double crochet into a total of 16 stitches for the front panel and then come back so now I have a total of 16 stitches and you can remove the two center stitch markers now then you're going to chain three and then turn your work make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this row you should still have a stitch count of 16 then you're going to chain three turn your work and we're going to finish our last row in the center here make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across and then you should still have a total stitch count of 16 when you finish this last row in the center then you can take and finish off just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work and then you finish the center portion so now just take here's the center portion the colors are facing towards you and we have the right side facing up and then you're going to go to the right top corner and you're going to join your yarn on that last stitch on the end bring up a loop of yarn then chain one and then tie a knot then you're going to chain three one two three and that counts as your first double crochet on this end then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch go behind your loose yarn end make a double crochet and you're going to make a double crochet into a total of 15 stitches your first chain three counts as one and then come back so one double crochet and for a total of 15 on this end go ahead and remove the stitch marker on this end and then I have 13 stitches so I'm going to make two more so that I have a total of 15 and this is going to be the armhole so you should have a total of 15 stitches on this side then you're going to chain three and turn your work and make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across and you should still have a stitch count of 15 when you finish this next row so now I still have 15 total stitches for that row you're going to chain three turn your work and then this is our last row on this side and you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch back across and when you finish this last row you should still have a 
stitch count of 15. When you finish your last row, you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And now we've finished the one side of the back panel. Here is one armhole. Here is the center. And now here's your other armhole, but we're going to work from this side. So count to make sure you have 15. So here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Go ahead and remove that stitch marker. That's in stitch 13. And count 14, 15. So go into the 15th stitch from the end and join your yarn. Chain one. And then tie a knot. That way both of your back panels will be the same size. So now you can chain three to start your first row for the other back panel. And then you're just going to make a double crochet into the next stitch going behind your loose yarn end. And you're going to make one double crochet in every stitch across. And you should have a total of 15 stitches on this end. So then, once you have your 15 total stitches, you're going to go ahead and chain 3, turn your work, and then make a double crochet into the next stitch, and every stitch back across, and you should still have a stitch count of 15 when you're finished. So we just finished that row. Now we're going to make our last row, chain 3, Turn your work, and then just make a double crochet in every stitch back across, and you should still have a stitch count of 15 when you finish this row. So now you just finished that last row for this back panel, and this is how my work looks so far. So now we're going to chain one, turn your work, and then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the first whoop, until you reach the first armhole. So here is the armhole. So we're making a single crochet until we reach this first armhole. Go ahead, finish making one single crochet in each stitch until the first armhole, and then come back and I'll show you what to do. So now I have a total of 15 single crochet stitches. Now I'm going to chain 9 across the armhole. So just chain 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I made a chain of 9. And then you're going to make a single crochet across the armhole into the center portion. Go behind the loose yarn end to bury it. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch and one single crochet in every stitch in the center portion until you get to the next armhole and then come back. So then when you reach the other armhole, you're going to chain 9 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then make a single crochet into the stitch across the last back panel. So you finished your second armhole. And then you just make a single crochet into each of the last remaining stitches. and then come back. So now you should have a total of 64 total stitches across. And now we're going to move up to the next row. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three, and then turn your work. And then you're going to make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch until you reach the first armhole 
and then come back and I'll show you how to work across the armhole. So now when you reach the armhole, you're just going to be working into the armhole space. So you just yarn over, go into the armhole space, bring up a loop, and complete your double crochet. And you're going to make a total of nine double crochet into the armhole space. So that was one, two, three, four, and you can move them over too if you need to, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And then, after you finish the stitches in the armhole, then you just go right to the next stitch in the center. So go ahead, finish making your double crochets all across to finish this row, all the way across, and then come back. Then, this is how my work looks so far. You can see how I've made the two armholes. Now we're just going to make two more rows of double crochet back and forth. So to move up to the next row, you just chain three, turn your work, and then make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across. So this is how my work looks so far. Now we're ready to move up to the last row. So you just chain three, turn your work, and then just make a double crochet into the next stitch, and one double crochet in every stitch back across. Now this was the last row that I made, but if you want your shirt to be a little bit longer, you can make additional rows if you want to. But this is my last row that I made for my shirt. Now you can go ahead and finish off after you finish your last double crochet. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. So now I just want to give you the measurements in case you're using a different style of yarn. So the back panel here measures about three inches. So it's about three inches. Then the arm hole is about two inches. The center portion is approximately four inches. Armhole again two inches and then four inches for the other back panel. Now you can take and just bury any of your loose yarn ends. Just take your tapestry needle, take any loose yarn end, and then just weave it into the wrong side of the work. So you just kind of weave it through the wrong side and then just trim it. So go ahead and bury any loose yarn ends and then I'll show you how to make the arms. So for the arms, you're just going to take your blue colored yarn and you're going to fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then take your crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for a slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot down and cinch the loop around your crochet hook. And then you're going to make a chain of 38. I'm just going to show you four of them on video tutorials. So here's one, two, three, and four. So go ahead, finish a chain of 38, and then come back. After you finish your chain of 38, then you're going to make a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So count back one, two, three, four. Make a double crochet into that stitch the fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop and make your double crochet. Then you're just going to make a double crochet into the next stitch and one double crochet in every stitch back across. And then come back. So this is what mine looks like so far and it measures eight inches across so eight inches across in case you're using different yarn. And now you're just going to take and slip stitch into a circle. So just take your work and make sure it's not flipped over. You don't want it crooked or twisted. 
You want it to be perfectly round and match up with the opposite side. And then just make a slip stitch into the top stitch of that first double crochet, which would be where you, the first stitch in the round. Then just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops for a slip stitch. Then just chain one and leave a little bit of a loop because you're going to take and go to the bottom and take your tapestry needle and join the bottom with the loose yarn end. Just take and tie a knot joining the two ends together. Then you can take with the work facing you, take your crochet hook, go back into where you left off, and then you're going to chain three, and then make one double crochet in every stitch around. So one double crochet in every stitch around, and then come back. So now I still have 36 total stitches in the round, which is what you want. Then you're going to join with this slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Now we're going to make a decrease round. So we're going to decrease the number of stitches in the round. So you're going to start by chaining three. One, two, three. And then you're going to make one double crochet into a total of six stitches. So that first chain three counts as your first stitch. So now I have two three, four, five, and six. Then you're going to make your double crochet two stitches together. So to do that, which would be your decrease stitch because you're two, crocheting two stitches together, but these are double crochet stitches. So we're going to make a double crochet two stitches together. So you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, you have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two only. You have two stitches remaining, yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop. Now you have four loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two stitches. You have three loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through all three for a double crochet, two stitches together. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. One double crochet into six stitches, and then double crochet two stitches together, repeating that pattern all the way around. And then towards the end, you'll have a few stitches remaining. Just make one double crochet into any remaining stitches. Then you can make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain three that you made, and that should leave you with a total of 32 stitches. Then you're going to chain three to move up to the next round, and for this next round, you're just going to make one double crochet in every stitch around and maintaining the stitch count of 32 and then come back. So I just finished my last stitch. I'm going to make a slip stitch into the top stitch of the first chain three that we made. And then our next round is going to be another decrease round. So you're going to chain three, one, two, three. And this time we're going to go into a total of five. So that first chain three counts as one. Make a double crochet into the next for your second, next for your third, next for your fourth, and your fifth. So one double crochet in a total of five stitches, and then you're going to double crochet two stitches together. So go ahead, repeat that pattern one double crochet into five stitches and then double crochet two stitches together repeating that pattern all the way around back to where you started and again when you reach the end you may have a few stitches left just make a double crochet into any remaining stitches and then my stitch count after this round is 28 then you just slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made and then chain three. And then for this round, you're just going to make one double crochet in every stitch around, maintaining your stitch count of 28. 
So now I'm back to where I started, so make my slip stitch to join the round. Then you're just going to sing chain one and then make a single crochet into the next stitch and then chain four, one, two, three, four, and then single crochet into the next two stitches and repeat. So chain four, one, two, three, four, and then single crochet into the next two stitches. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around back to where you started. So chain four, then single crochet into two stitches. One, two. So go ahead, repeat that pattern all the way around and then come back. Then when you finish your last loop, you can make a slip stitch into the first stitch. Just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops and then finish off. Just yarn over and just pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And you're going to need two of these. So now you should have both arms finished and we're going to sew them in place on the shirt. But before we do that, we're just going to take and bury the loose yarn in that's near the chain four loops. So you just take, I have the right side showing right now, but just take your loose yarn end that's near the chain four loops, put it onto your tapestry needle, and then you're just going to weave it through the inside or the wrong side of the crochet work. Then you can take and cut it. So now you can go ahead and get your tapestry needle and put some of the same colored yarn onto the tapestry needle. We're going to sew the arms in place. Hold your crochet work so that the wrong side is facing you. Then take your arm sleeve that has the right side facing you and go under. And take the loose yarn end and place that towards the bottom. And Then you're just going to lay the work on top. And then you have on bottom, just center the bottom where you have the loose yarn in, bring it over to the wrong side. And then you're going to take your tapestry needle and then just go right in where that loose yarn end is on the bottom. You can see how I'm just going right stitch on the wrong side of the shirt with a stitch on the arm sleeve. And then just pull your yarn through. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for tying a knot. And then you're ready to sew all around the arm, securing it in place. You just go in and out with your thread and your tapestry needle sewing all around the opening so that the ridge is on the wrong side and then when you open up to the right side you don't have a ridge. So now you have one sleeve in place, go ahead and attach the other sleeve the exact same way. So now you can turn the work so that the right side is facing you and then we're going to fold the collar down and then just place a stitch right in one of the chain four loops. So you just go right, come from the wrong side to the right side, and then you're going to place a stitch into the collar, the chain four portion of the collar. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn in on the inside for burying into your work, and then just go like a millimeter over just to hold the collar in place. Then you can take and tie a knot on the wrong side and then bury your loose yarn ends. And then just repeat the same process for the other collar and then we're ready to make the buttons on the back of the outfit. Then you want to just take your button and you're going to place it on the right side. This is the right sides facing me on the back of the outfit. So here you can see is the right side of the back and here's the left side of the back. And you want to place your button just under the collar 
on that side. Line it up and then take your sewing needle and white thread or whatever color thread you want to use if you want to use a blue thread to match your outfit and then just come through and sew the button in place. After you finish sewing your buttons in place then you can take and you can use the double crochet on the opposite side as a buttonhole. So I love that technique. But if you don't want to use the double crochet as a buttonhole you could make a chain loop down the side but the double crochet works great for just folding right along the button and working as a buttonhole. Now your shirt is all finished. You can go ahead and put it on the doll. And I'm going to show you how to make the dress that goes over this shirt. 